Hi folks, this is Tom here with uh, frugalpreppers.com. Um, this is my new uh, little Intel motherboard. Now this video isn't really about prepping, and this is just a quick video from my phone, and my son's playing games in the background, so it might be a little noisy. But um, I got this board, I'm basically building a little network attached storage with a couple of one terabyte drives. And let me uh, show you this board that I got. It's the uh, Intel desktop board DN2800MT. has an Intel Atom processor on it, and this particular one has the new high-speed uh, video chip on it as well. Um, pretty nice little board. It, it's fanless. It's just got a heat sink on the CPU there. It takes the uh, laptop size uh, memory. Um, it's got two slots, and I put a 4 gig in there. However, on the side of the box, it tells you that this motherboard can handle a maximum of 4 gigs of RAM, so... Um, you know, I guess I could have just got two two gigs, um, but I think it was actually cheaper to get the one four gig. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things that's weird about this motherboard, if you look at it all over the place, you're like, where is the ATX power supply connector that works with this kind of a standard ATX power supply? And the, there isn't one. This motherboard has two things. Now, on the back of this, there is a little jack right here. And they give you a little rubber insert to stick into that so that nobody will plug in an external power supply in it if you're powering it from the inside. And that would normally run on an 8 to 19 volt, uh, 60 to 70 watt, uh, like laptop style power supply or any power supply you want. Which makes this board great if you're just wanting to build a appliance out of it. But I already had this like cheapy little uh, ATX style case and wanted to put this board in. So if you look on this board... Uh, let's see if I can get a picture. There's a little black two pin power connector right there. Um, let me see if I can get just enough light on it and point to it. It's this little connector right here. And that will also power it from the inside. And you can hook, if you look at the manual, up to 8 to 19 volts on it to power it. So I got to looking around and I was like, hmm, we have this guy right here. This is your P4 connector. Um, that usually gives you the extra 12 volt rail to your motherboard um, and if you look at the specs on the power supply that extra 12 volt rail um, which is the 12 volt v2 will handle up to 15 amps <coughs> so that's plenty of power to power the motherboard so at first i was going like, to try to cut that off and find a connector but then if you look at this connector up close, you'll see that it's actually marked um, is actually marked uh, positive and negative. And if you plug this connector in, you just hang two of the pins off on the side, and the other two pins plug in. You want to do it right here? And it actually, even the little clip will clip around that two-pin connector. And it puts your yellow and black, which is your 12 volts in your ground, in the exact right place. So that gets you 12 volts to the motherboard, but then it's like, well, how do I turn the power supply on and off? Because uh, on an ATX motherboard, the actual motherboard, when you hit the reset button, shorts two of the pins together to leave it powered on. It draws one of these uh, voltages to ground. And the two wires that you do this with are your uh, green and black, and it's the... Uh, fourth and fifth wire down on the side where your clip is. Um, I'll shine the light over here so maybe you see the colors a little better. Uh, but it's the green and black. And you just took an old power supply that was bad, cut a wire off of it, stuck it in those two pins. Now that makes it so anytime I hit the power button back here to flip this on, then the power comes on. And that also powers up the drives off of that power supply. Now this motherboard they do give you a small cable so if you are running this off an external power supply you can use this neat little cable and it will uh, on one end on this end plug in right here to the motherboard. Um, I'll show you. It'll plug in right there um, and that will give you power to power up drives off of that other power connection. But I figured rather than trying to do it that way I'm just going to make it so that my drives run right off the power supply. 
So what I do now is I flip the back switch that powers up the drives, the fans start spinning in the back, and um, but the motherboard doesn't power on. And so um, on this particular case, it's kind of weird. It doesn't have a power LED that comes off the motherboard. The power LED actually hooks into a Molex connector to come on. So um, it's a little cheap Chinese case from Micro Center that I got for like 15 bucks or something. Um, so you actually, the light will be on once you flip on the power supply, but then I hit the power button and the motherboard powers up and you see a screen. And the reset button, of course, is hooked to that. And then what I did is this motherboard also has a hard drive LED. I hooked the hard drive LED up to the power uh, thing on the motherboard so that when the motherboard's powered on, the hard drive LED comes on solid because I don't really need to see the hard drive activity. Um, but then, so, I mean, that's the process to go ahead and boot it up is to flip the power on the back and then hit the power button and then it comes up. And when you shut it down, it'll shut off, but it'll still stay powered on until you flip the power button on the back. Um, you know, this, you know, I just have my two one terabyte or two, uh, two terabyte SATA drives um, in my little uh, hard drive swap out base here. Um, and this is basically um, just going to be um, a uh, Cent OS box. I already have Cent OS installed on here. And I just set up a quick Samba share and called it disk to disk backups or D to D backups. And then all my workstations, I'm using a program called Drive Snapshot. And you can look that program up. I'll put a link below uh, drive snapshot.de. But it allows me to do block level based backups of my hard drives and then do differential block based backups of my drives every day. And it's just a little 239k program that runs in a batch file. So you set that up, and you have it right. Your, you know, you set up a little, write a little batch file, have it do your differential backups every day, off to a server like this, and then you always have a complete copy of your computer. And from that backup, you can restore an image and do an image-based backup to bring it back exactly where it was on that day that differential ran. Or you can pull it up and just restore individual files off of it. So like if you just deleted a document, you can do that too. And the program is a free th for 30 days to try out. Um, and then it's like uh, 39 euros to buy it from uh, the guy for a workstation. And it's like 89 euros to buy it for a server. Um, but it's a really good deal for how simple the program is and how well it works. And I've used it a lot. Um, like before I do a server upgrade or something and have and it blows up on me and I'll have to restore the image back and it's worked perfectly every time. It also has an exchange writer so it understands volume snapshots and how to back up exchange. Um, so your exchange files will be intact and, and closed neatly when you go to uh, do a restore of exchange. So just an all around good program and you know you buy this little motherboard for a hundred bucks, couple of drives, throw it in an old case and and build a, a put a samba share on there and linux is free you've got a really robust uh, backup solution for the cost of a few of those licenses um, that doesn't cost you anything so this is actually for work i'm an it director by trade so um, i get into little projects like this all the time um, but however i built two of these boxes actually and the second one's actually going to go off site and then i'm going to use rsync to sync the last, uh, the most recent backup, differential backup offsite each night. Um, and that way, we always have a copy, a disaster recovery copy of all of our uh, servers and PCs sitting on a second server at another branch. And then that server at the other branch backs up their servers and PCs and syncs them back over to this one. So I have a complete copy of everything at every branch synced across the wind every night so if any one location burnt down blew up went away had a storm tornado i can literally rebuild everything and the nice thing about this is when you do an image with drive snapshot you can also restore it into vmware um, or a virtual machine like VirtualBox, so that you could get your servers back up and going real fast in a virtualized environment all my servers are virtualized anyway but, and, and Snapshot also uh, supports restoring to disk like hardware. So it'll insert new drivers on the fly for your disk and stuff. So that if you get new PCs, you can still restore that image to the new PC and get it running. Um, like I said, a real robust program for a 235K file. Um, and I highly recommend it. 
But um, that's a little bit about the motherboard, how it works, and how you can get it to power up off an ATX power supply, and a little bit about like the backup solution that I'm doing. Great little backup solution for your home as well. Thanks. This is Tom with Frugal Preppers. Uh, please leave any questions or comments, and I will try to reply. Thanks. Bye.